that perspective that we offering is really like, it's only a perspective that you can really get from us. And the culmination of that is what becomes Joseph or Saba or Fresh or Mello or Squeak or Day Day even from a production standpoint. It's the sum, it's the sum of it. And that's what makes it different. That's what makes it true. That's what makes it, you know, a unique story to tell, you know? You got time on your side and you use it well, you don't never fit. I just got off parole. Little situation happened back, you know, when we first started out as a group. Like, this is before Bucket List? Yeah. You're locked up that whole time? Yeah, we, this is back when we were still shorty, still at the over mics, you know what I'm saying, with like No Name and Mick Jenkins and Chance and, you know, all the homies, Jamila Woods, all that stuff. But like now it's like, you know what I'm saying, big difference, big change to be able to come home and then see like, you know, progress, progression, hard work and dedication, see what that turned into. You know, the city really, you know what I'm saying, like love for us to be going as hard as we are, you know what I'm saying, representing how we is. So that's, that's a plus side to it. We got mad influence from the west side of Chicago, but as far as the new generation, I feel like they only talk about the south side. It's a new perspective. Like Chicago in general just has a different perspective to offer than any other place because all these experiences are happening like every day and they're so different from what's going on anywhere else. By the West Side being so beautiful as it is, it's been preserved for a while and you know what I'm saying, the stories need to be told about what's been, you know, unseen for that amount of time. Unfortunately, the most that's being talked about is, is the violence. It's so much more going on out West, man. It's a lot of soul, it's a lot of, you can, you can feel it. To spread that this is a violent place, I don't think that that's really true for, for the most part. This was a spot we probably couldn't be posted up like this back in the day, you know what I'm saying? But it's good to be able to see, you know what I'm saying, people still coming out, you know what I'm saying, to the area, and, you know what I'm saying, being they bring their family out here, bring the kids out here. That's a, that's a beautiful thing to see. Bro, everybody raps fast now, bro. Right. That's the West Side right there. That's the West Side, bro. <laughs> You know, the West Side, we always been her. We always gonna be her. West Side everywhere, West Side worldwide. Pivot Gang, you know, we just a newer version of, you know what I'm saying, what the West Side bring. How did y'all begin making music and what were some of those early open mics y'all went to that led y'all sharpen y'all skill set? Well, their brothers and their brothers and me and him are brothers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I went to school with Joe, Joe and Sab. Like, uh, after we graduated, I like went over there and like, to like, who? and it started rapping. Like, I had never really recorded before then. Like, I was really just starting to get to know them, and I just stayed the week. Once we all met, it kind of just, like, stuck though. Because it's so many of us, everybody kind of had their own journey as far as when they began making music. But I would say when we began making music together is kind of when everything clicked. Uh, so we started going to open mics and like, 20, 2011, 2012. If you didn't have it there, you didn't have it. Right. So okay. it was over with. It was like, hey, you might as well start finding a different profession, <laughs> go back to school, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's about that time to start picking your career now. Fresh used to hit all of the open mics in the city, so he just started bringing me with him. That's why I feel like I really learned how to perform. Like, we was treating that like headlining stages, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, once they call on that, because some days you would go to the open mics and not get called. So it was like, when they called us, we really took advantage, and that's why I learned how to perform and crowd control and all of that stuff. The pivot's been a thing for a while, and it used to be rally, it used to be another thing, and then they, they haven't put out music in a really long time, and I kind of came in and started being a big part of this, and this is the first group album that we've all made together. Fresh was gone for a while, and everyone was trying to build up their, Mel was trying to build up his thing, Joe was trying to build up his thing, Sab so was doing his thing. I'm working on all their things, but once we got there, it just like wasn't even, any thought to it. It was just like, cool, I'm gonna do my thing. Oh, you're rapping about this? All right, cool. I'll, oh, I go get some lunch. Dad would squeak would make something. Sometimes I would just, like, I made Mortal Kombat. Sometimes I'll just make a, a schmacker, you know what I'm saying? I'll just make some, make some, I think I made that in like five minutes or something. What's the word? It's like a chemistry. You know, you work with people for years and years and years, and y'all just develop that, that sound together. I didn't even actually listen to rap until I was like 20. Really? Yeah, like at all and now making some of the most important hip hop records <laughs> of. <laughs> I, I got really into it, because I, I was in school for drums. Right. And a friend of mine, he was like, dude, you would love like rap. I don't know why you don't listen to rap. It's like all rhythms, all the music is rhythms, all the all the vocals are rhythms. Like, And I started listening I started listening to Lil Wayne and Flock of Belly. And then I was like, damn, like, this is awesome. Your father was a, mu a musician too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you talk about that as well. What, what was mm -hmm. your relationship like with him? Did, were you close and do you think some of your, music acumen, your, your skill set comes yeah, genetically. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it, a lot of it. 
he did like R&B, neo soul. He produced, he produced some some hip hop stuff too. Uh, but he was like the first person who I kind of like seen doing music. So music was never like this like foreign concept. Like I think just pursuing art in general to most kids is like this crazy concept where like the older people in your life are kind of like making it seem like it's not a real thing. Right, right. But because my dad was doing it, it's kind of like taking over the family business or something like that. Like I believe from a young age that everything that I'm doing now was possible. And I think my father had a lot to do with building that up like that. I don't know, I think that's one of the biggest reasons as far as how I ended up in the position that I'm in is just from the information that my dad would give me from since I was young. She be with her girls, not no fellas, and they can't get whoever they want cause they fit. I was watching the Mortal Kombat video with the salsa, like you had good salsa, Latin you, sensation bro, vibes. It's all about the footwork. Yeah. Yeah. One, two. Uh-huh. One, two. I, I don't know if I want to One, two. Okay. One, two, one, two. And okay, it's happening. And you move your hips with it. Uh-huh. You know? Right. I don't know shit about salsa, bro. Why you had me do that? <laughs> Cause I just knew you would, man. <laughs> I just knew you would. What's yeah. your favorite moment on You Can't Sit With Us? Oh, my favorite moment, definitely Colbert. You know what I'm saying? Colbert is just like, it, 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 it take you on a whole different, you know what I'm saying, vibe. Like you just, you there and you just like attached to it for that whole moment, you know what I mean? Mm. One sec, let me check that flight at old hair. In my glow like a super saiyan with gold hair. Out and Squeak made Colbert, which is one of the songs on it. Squeak made the drums. And, yeah, Squeak made the drums and Dawood made the the chords and stuff. Colbert, that was my favorite moment just because like it just hit a meal and I just did a meal with my brother, Fresh Waters. So like that was like a trap beat initially on my laptop and then like I just arranged some sounds around and I was like, hey that would make this sound pretty pretty much. Joseph's verse on Death Row, the the intro was probably my favorite verse on the whole album. So I would go with that one too. The government like I don't pay taxes About the bubble like Kim Kardashian Sleeping on me is like f***ing an assassin I got the juice like Peach Passion I wasn't This was my first time traveling somewhere Just to work on music Like we all, like we know we from Chicago But we all went to LA And got studio, got Airbnb And just lived out there for like, I don't know, 10 days Wow And just worked on the album Also, this was my first time working with Pivot as a whole in probably five years, maybe. So, it, and we didn't know how it was gonna go. So like once we got back in that room and it felt exactly like how it did, like at my grandma's basement five years ago, you know what I'm saying? Like it was like, wow, this is really special. And y'all experience it firsthand because rest in peace to John Wall. I remember how that Rock the City went at when he was killed and for that to be captured on footage. Long performed as John Walt with the Chicago group Pivot Gang. He would later change his name to Dinner with John. As beautiful as the city is, it's so much ugliness that comes around. Talk about how losing John has affected the group and just his impact on, you know what I'm saying, on Pivot Gang, man, as, as a unit. That was a hard one, obviously, you know. Uh, but like even just outside of the music and the dynamics of the group, like, we just used to seeing and talking to this man every day. You know what I'm talking about? Whether it's about music or whether it's just like what you doing today. You know what I'm talking about? And like to just have something like that, like randomly plucked away from you, like over something so unnecessary, was probably some of the craziest stuff I've ever had to deal with. You know, we lost a brother and there's nothing that can replace him, uh, his energy, you know, his spirit you see like the impact that someone has. Like bro had an impact, you know, but like don't even get to see it, you know? So it's just like you you want to honor that, honor his life and just like do it, as, do it even bigger. The motherfucker repping Pivot the hardest is not even on this earth right now. So it's like, it just feel, you know what I'm saying? We feel that protection from, from above, from below, from all around, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Losing a member of the, of the crew like that, losing a, the, you know what I'm saying? Like this everybody brother, this everybody best friend, this everybody homie. I feel like it brought us all closer together. Like we all had to, we all had to face that together. It brought us closer together with a lot of people in the city like that we wouldn't even thought now I look at it like a, like an energy thing, like while energy never left. 
like how our bond, I feel like, with each other got stronger after going through that because all we had was each other to really keep keep everybody up during that time. You know, we just doing our best to keep moving, keep pushing, keep building on the game. But y'all started a foundation in his honor. Facts. Yeah. The John Wall Foundation, we started uh, right after he passed with uh, Walt's mom, Nichelle. And uh, really, we've been, tr we've been trying to go hard, man. We've been trying to just... Uh, get as much money we can and, and help kids that are in arts. We got uh, we got singers, dancers, we got kids in fashion. We got just, you know, we just trying to give back the best way we know how, which we do art, so that's, you know, that's what we, we know how art helped us and how art saved us from a, a, a lot of stuff. So it's like our real, real mission, you know what I'm saying, with coming together and doing the John Wall Foundation was to just, give back in that in that type of way. Five years later, still making music together. Where do y'all see Pivot Gang five years from now? In five years, we're gonna all hate each other. <laughs> and uh, Damn, really. in five years, it will have been three years since the last time we all spoke to each other. <laughs> that's a dope <laughs> You know why that's so dope? That means you success every successful group has to hate each other for a period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you still love them. You know what I'm saying? These is no. I think with Pivot Game, like it's just that family <laughs> aspect that really make it so I don't really worry about that. You know, this is my brother. They brothers, like he said, they brother. Like you know what I'm saying? How has being a part of Pivot Game helped you to grow as a man and as a person? Well, I got six brothers and one sister, so it's just like that's always who I had. You feel me? So it's just like that's who I was. I was just used to all the time. I didn't have like as many friends outside of that, just my family. So it's just like, when I got into this, it just showed me, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can have family outside of family. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. Um, it just show you how to hold your own, just like, cause you see everybody's journey and you just see how everybody different in a way. So it's just like, you learning and picking up things from each and one of those men. So, you know what I'm saying? It just, you know, it helps you build your own character. I mean, they always ask me like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? Like, musical um, inspiration, like who people inspire you? I'll be like, my friends, my homies, my friends. Like, that's real life, <laughs> that's you feel? You know what I'm saying? If y'all were the cast of a 90s sitcom, what would it be called and what would the premise be? Colorism. <laughs> Y'all snap. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that was nice. All the popular sitcoms in the 90s didn't acknowledge black people. Fact. It just, it gotta be about uh, black people occupying white spaces. So it would just be a bunch of black people going to places where you know white people actually exist and they're not there. You know? <laughs> uh, that definitely would be the most, that's the most important thing. I feel like we definitely gotta do that. It's inspiring to see a group of like young black men be able to bounce off of each other and count on each other the way you guys do. It's rare that you see a group of men that can stand on their own, but also support one another and produce a body of work together. What's the challenges in putting together a coalition like that? Man, it's, it's like an like NBA team. It's just like a team, you know what I'm saying? It's, you gotta know your role. It's just like, where is that in your position? At, right there and at that moment, you know, um, and just, you know, believing in one another, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you got to trust your teammates, you know what I'm saying, to, you know, get to the to the biggest success. Love, Locking bro. in with me, John. Yeah, I appreciate you doing this with us, man. I'm happy that you from the crib and you sitting down to talk with us. That makes this even cooler, you know what I'm talking about? So That's I appreciate right. you, bro. Yeah, you you keep it. doing these great things, man. Got it too. The, the city appreciates you. My mellow, man. Yeah, yeah. That's the only co-sign I need right there. <laughs> we the city appreciate it. We good. For sure, for sure. <laughs>